What's up guys, I'm gonna be telling you about the most broken, the most OP, the most complete build for Helldive difficulty for any situation that's thrown at you. It's got the jazz, it's got the sassiness, and all of that with a cup of liberty. And none of those stratagems that I just showed you. Okay, let's be real, I'm not gonna say it's the best or the most OP build, but it is really strong. The build that I use or have been using that I came up with after playing Helldivers 2 for almost 200 hours, it has allowed me to tackle any mission, enemy or challenge that I've come across on Helldive difficulty. Since I have maxed out and capped on the level, the resources and samples etc, I've been just using this all this time to get here and now I'm using it to help friends and randoms alike. And least to say every mission even on Helldive difficulty, we complete all the primary, secondary and all the optional objectives with ease. So before we talk about the stratagems and the weapons and all that, let's quickly talk about the armor. As of this moment, everyone knows that the armors have their armor stats bugged and they're all basically giving you the same damage resistance as of the light armor, but there's no point in using the heavy or the medium armors as they're just going to cap your movement speed. However, the passive could be a reason that you would use any of those armors, but then again, the light armor will give you the same or even better passives as well. So I personally use the legionnaire armor since I like the throwing range and also the limb health as sometimes I hold on to my stems just to stim myself when the stamina bar is depleted and I'm in desperate need of stamina as using the stim when the stamina is depleted instantly restores it. But if you have the limb damage you would have to heal immediately as if your leg is hurt you cannot sprint or if your arms hurt you will have less accuracy and more recoil. So I use the Legionnaire but some of the worthy mentions would be the Trailblazer Scout as its passive gives you 30% reduced detection range and if you've got a stealthy playstyle or in case if you're playing solo, stealth is a very surprisingly powerful playstyle in Helldivers 2 for bugs and especially for automatons. Another reason to use the light armors even if the armor ratings were to be fixed is that unlike some other games the goal in Helldivers 2 is basically not to kill each and every enemy but to get most if not all the objectives done and extract. Whereas if you play or have played on the higher difficulties you will know how crazy it gets and that you will always have more enemies than bullets or stratagems to throw at. Hence you gotta stay on the move and retreat and retaliate. Especially once you have completed an objective, it's best to quickly start making your way onto the next one and outrun the aggroed enemies or the breaches happening at the same time and lose the aggro. So let's actually talk about the stratagems and weapons. You can't even guess it. You won't even expect it. Ready? Now the first stratagem that we are going to be talking about is the railgun. Wait, 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 hear me out. It's interesting, I swear. I know everyone knows about the railgun. The game's been out for three weeks now and every other Helldiver is using the railgun. But please, keep watching, it gets better. All right, so I know the railgun is the go-to and there's no surprise there, but why is that? In order to answer this question and also to understand the reasoning behind the other stratagems in the build and the weapon choices, we need to understand what we're up against and how to deal with it. Let me make it make sense. So being an enthusiastic player of PvE shooter games, my approach when playing a game is to understand the enemy down to their core and then trying to find the best tools that offer the best TTKs or the time to kill for dealing with them. Simple. So let's talk about the enemies in the game. Let's take the Terminates for example. So you have these little shits, these cute but also little shits, these fucking little shits, these motherfucking annoying piece of fucking shits, these assholes, this chad, these, wait, why do we even have these? shrimps or whatever. This bubba, these sneaky bitches. Oh yeah, and this dude too. Let's quickly categorize them as armored, unarmored, and semi or medium armored enemies. Now when it comes to the armored enemies, we don't have a lot of options at least for heavy armor. Yeah, the, the auto cannon can take out some of them, even the anti-material rifle, but then these weapons are required to be used in a certain way, hitting certain spots, such as the back of a hulk. But like we said, in this video, we are talking about optimization and the best possible TTKs we can get. Hence, the railgun. The railgun is just too efficient. Is it the most fun? I don't know, and I'll let you be the judge of that. Now, to pick further stratagems in this build, you need to know which 
which stratagems can take out a single or multiple heavy armored targets and which ones can take out the bosses and on top of that if these stratagems can automatically lock on to the target or will have to be manually aimed and placed carefully. Their cooldown times, number of uses, call in times etc etc. Honestly in my opinion the real threat are not the chargers or the titans on their own. I think the chargers can be easily dodged and kited or as you already might know can be easily dealt with by placing two shots on either of the front legs with the railgun to strip off its armor and then finished off with a few shots from your primary weapon. Even the bile titans can be outrun or can be one-shotted if you're lucky by a shot from the railgun of course in the mouth when they're biling or sometimes two shots on the chin or the side. However that is not very consistent. The real problem arises when these bile titans and chargers are accompanied by a huge number of unarmored or semi slash light armored enemies which are the bulk of the enemies you're going to be facing in this game. And for that, I have the second stratagem for you, which is the Eagle Cluster Bomb. So the Eagle Cluster Bomb has 5 uses per every Eagle Rearm instead of 4 uses once Expanded Bay is unlocked. And the cooldown time will be 8 seconds once Liquid Ventilated Cockpit is unlocked. So it is very spammable which is cool as there is no other stratagem that will give you so many uses with such a low cooldown given the number of enemies that are thrown at you especially on Helldive. This gives you an edge in the battlefield. The call in time is almost instant so you will almost 9 out of 10 times hit the patrols that you are trying to take out or hordes that you're trying to thin out it will also kill semi or medium armored enemies nine out of ten times too but beware though it will do jack shit against armored targets so don't end up wasting it on them However, one cool thing I found out is if a charger or a battle titan that has a chunk of its armor stripped off, a well-placed cluster bomb can kill it. So if there's a horde of enemies, what you can do is throw an eagle cluster bomb and quickly take two railgun shots on the charger's leg to strip off its armor before the cluster bomb hits and the charger is going to be leveled to the ground along with all the unarmored enemies. The cluster bomb goes from side to side horizontally and it has a decent radius for killing a lot of bugs or enemies in general and friends so be a bit careful with that or just don't because i call it a tactical team kill a bonus stratagem that you can get that gives you 20 uses very quickly are teammates just reinforce them and mark an enemy and they'll land and kill them sweet liberty now that we have our huge number of trash mob killing spammable stratagem out of the way let's talk about the heavy armor boss killing stratagem as we all know on higher difficulties you will have a numerous amount of bile titan pool parties going on and will face multiple charges that you want to quickly take care of. Hence, the orbital rail cannon strike. Well, this is the boss killer for you. I mean, if you're lucky and it hits the bile titan at the right angle in the head and not the back, uh, well, seriously though, I love it as the biggest advantage of using it is that it automatically locks onto the biggest target available and it is a single target only stratagem. In a very, very rare case, if you're throwing it at a bile titan for an example, but it is too too far away. It will also lock on to the second biggest target within its range. But then again, the intended target has to be way out of reach. Like mentioned earlier, the one-shot potential does exist, however, it is slightly inconsistent. With that being said, though it doesn't sometimes one-shot them, it leaves the Titan very weak and finishing them off with the railgun is quite easy. With this stratagem, you won't have to worry about a Titan or a Charger once every 3.5 minutes as the cooldown is reduced by 10%. Once 0G breach loading is purchased. Now, for the last stratagem, I'll give you the one that I use as well as a few other considerable options that you can go with depending on the situation or the type of mission you're deploying on. For myself, almost every time my staple loadout is the railgun, the eagle cluster bomb, the orbital rail cannon, and lastly, the eagle airstrike. Now, remember, I said that you face numerous bile titans and chargers on Helldive. Well, the eagle airstrike as well does some serious damage to armor. It can put potentially kill chargers or leave them very weak. It can also finish off battle titans too that have already taken some damage beforehand and luckily this stratagem is the one which you unlock very early on. The only hustle is that it doesn't lock on two targets but don't get me wrong all in time is almost in an instant and it also goes from side to side horizontally and has a decent radius. The eagle airstrike can easily take out bug holes or automaton production facilities. A well-placed eagle airstrike can take out 
small bug holes nests with a good placement without you ever going into the nest at all. You get two uses of the eagle airstrike per eagle rearm and three uses once expanded bay is unlocked. While the cooldown time is merely 8 seconds once liquid ventilated cockpit is unlocked. One thing that I wanted to point out is the mistake I was personally making early on. So unless you want a particular depleted eagle strike back, make sure that you have consumed any eagle airstrike charges that you have left before you send your eagle to rearm to get the most value out of it. The eagle rearm cooldown once you have the pit crew hazard pay unlocked is merely 2 minutes. Now with the honorable mentions to replace the eagle airstrike, 500 kg bomb. I like it as it one shots titans and anything else and is the only other option that can destroy rogue research stations other than the hell bomb. And you can get 2 uses per eagle rearm once you have the ship module upgrades. However, it could be a hit or a miss as this does not lock on and have the smallest radius. And finally for the honorable mentions orbital laser. It is amazing for killing a lot of general stuff and even the elites will get suppressed and potentially killed. However, I really dislike the long cooldown and also being limited to 3 uses per mission. So with this setup you have the power of trash killing, the elite killing and the power to destroy holes and nests as well as structures. Literally there's nothing you can't take on with this setup. Another thing you can do is have a teammate have a shield backpack stratagem and then you can share your railgun and shields with each other and my man you are now untouchable. Now before we conclude the video and assuming you have made it this far let's quickly talk about the weapons. Now the way I like to use the railgun is you one shot these enemies with a headshot and there's nothing else that would give you any faster TTKs than the railgun. Thus we will not be considering these enemies when making weapon choices unless otherwise as everything else can be dealt with either with your primary or the secondary weapon with fast and decent TTKs. So I personally use the breaker. I know, I know, but I do use some other weapons too. And before we talk about those options, I want to tell you that the breaker one shots warriors, two shots stalkers, whereas one shots anything smaller for sure. It's not too efficient versus these little shits ammo wise and you'd be better off using your secondary for them. Whereas where the breaker lacks, the default liberator shines. It almost gives you that mini machine gun of a feeling due to it's such bigger mag especially for the little shits. However, it does have slightly longer TTKs on the warriors and stalkers. Its total ammo pool is also very generous. Now coming back to the breaker. No, not the breaker breaker. No, not this piece of shit breaker. It can't even kill a fucking egg in one full mag. Yes, this breaker. The breaker incendiary, well say what you want but it is way satisfying to light them enemy scum on fire. It's got a little bit of a spread compared to the default breaker. However, it's double the mag, double the fun. Very efficient for the little shits. Another very, very good weapon choice would be the Plus Scorcher. It has low ammo pool, small magazine size, but boy oh boy, it packs a punch. Yeah, uh, the only problem is you're always going to be surrounded and shooting it real close will kill your teammates, which we don't care about, but will also most definitely kill you too. I'd say it's really good and you can try it on for size. Next up, the Dominator. The Dominator packs a very solid punch. Where I'd always go with the breaker for the bugs, the Dominator is my go-to for the automatons. It has a surprisingly long range and precision, with just a small issue being its max size. And now for the secondary, for the bugs, you can't go wrong with either the Peacemaker or the Redeemer. Where both weapons have the same damage and a close enough fire rate, the Redeemer is best for running and gunning with slightly slower reload, where the Peacemaker offers more precision and controlled shots with a faster reload. To quickly wind up, the last two weapons of both the primary and the secondary weapons category are the Slugger and the Revolver. Now, these two, though different categories of weapons, are somewhat similar in one way, which is they both can penetrate medium armor just fine. Now, the benefit of using these two is that the medium armored enemies that you'd usually use the railgun on now you could just use the slugger or the revolver instead and conserve railgun ammo for the bigger targets. Also, the one thing that's really good with these two is that you could reload them both between shots, as it's an individual bullet or shell reload rather than a full mag. No discarded ammo. The revolver can and will one-shot all the light armored automatons with shots anywhere on the body. And the downside? Well, the fire rate and the reload success on both of these weapons. So it's basically a trade-off when using any of these weapons that we just discussed about. Fuck them. Fuck them all. Use the default breaker and the redeemer.